What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick little trading update as well as talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally keeping an eye on here for the rest of April in 2019. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you is if you find value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box for you. One of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. Both of these are 100% free of charge and I guarantee you guys, you will find value in those two communities. So without further ado, let's just hop into what ends ended up happening today on the 22nd of April in the overall stock market and it was another pretty boring day to be quite honest with you guys. The S&P 500 here ended up closing up $2.94, nothing much at all, up about 0.1% here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing red, down about $48.49, down 0.18%. And the NASDAQ Composite here, guys, after hours, it's currently up about $4 right now, up 0.05%. But if we look and see exactly where it ended up closing... Roughly about, yeah, roughly about where we are right now. So pretty much a very minimal green day in the NASDAQ as well. So guys, the markets just quite frankly, to be quite honest with you all, they've been pretty boring here over the past couple of days in terms of the indexes, right? But in terms of stocks and ETFs, there have been nice movers like there always is. Doesn't mean since the indexes are boring, it doesn't mean there's no stocks to play, but Overall, the markets have been boring. So let's hop back over here to the S&P 500 very quickly and break down what I am personally seeing. So if we're just taking a look here at the five-day, five-minute chart to kind of get an understanding of what's been going on on a closer-term basis here, we can see the two levels that we've been talking about, 29.05 and 29.15. These levels have been pretty much resistance levels for the S&P 500. 500, right over the past week we've been struggling to get out of 2905 we finally gapped up got rejected twice at 2915 that general area we sold off last week on Wednesday and Thursday ended up closing the day on Thursday roughly at around 2905 and today guys we're seeing a bit of a reversal pattern to the upside here in the S&P 500 and let me explain what I mean by that right we've been noticing again over the past Last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, these three trading days, we were kind of downtrending, right? Lower lows, you know, lower highs. We ended up gapping up here, but it was still a lower high from the previous. That was kind of bearish, right? We were talking about that in last week's videos. But today, take a look at what ended up happening, guys. The low here is at 28.91. We ended up gapping up or rather popping up rather to a higher low at about 28.96 here and another one at about 2900 flat which is a good sign that we're reversing to the upside. We also ended up finally breaking out of that 2905 level of resistance. We're now maintaining it as a new support and we actually bounced off of that support and we closed up to 2907 which just happens to be roughly a higher high from the previous, right? Very briefly a higher high here, but it's still technically speaking here is a higher high. So let me show you guys here with this little trend line what we're seeing, right? It's kind of like you can say a little cup pattern now, like a little V pattern, right? We were going down for those past three days last week, right? The last three days, and now we're slowly starting to pop back up. So for the S&P 500, just keep an eye tomorrow. Are we going to maybe retest 29.15? If we do, that's a good sign that we slowly want to push to higher highs. And of course, if we break 29.15, guys, that is a one-stop shop to the all-time highs. And just judging off this 184 hour, 
However, we're looking at a couple of green candlesticks here. That's a pretty good sign that we're pretty bullish right now in the S&P. So just keep an eye on that pop tomorrow, potentially above 29.15. So let's go to the Dow Jones very quickly here. Not much to say, to be quite honest, guys. We're still just trading in between this level of support at 26400 and the level of resistance at about $26,800. So what I would watch for tomorrow is... Are we going to retest 26400 possibly if we continue this little red movement that we've had from today? Or are we going to pop up, let's say the markets do well tomorrow, the S&P pushes up, likely the Dow will follow. Let's say we end up popping up and retesting or testing rather that resistance at 26800. That is what I'm watching. But as of now, we're just simply trading in between old support levels, right? The, the Well, now they're new support levels at 26400 from back in September of 2018. And we're trading at or under rather a resistance from back in the middle of September in 2018. So this general area. And if we break out of the 26800 level, that is really the one-stop shop to the all-time highs. And for fun, let's just see how far we are right now roughly from these all-time highs on the Dow. We're about 1.6% off. If we're going back to the S&P 500 very quickly, we can see from about 2907 roughly up to about 2940, we're roughly about a 1.1% off um, from the S on the S&P 500. And you all, you all know by now the NASDAQ actually ended up hitting was it today? Actually, we hit an all-time high again today, but we broke the all-time highs from back in October on the NASDAQ. A couple of days ago, it was last week. So pretty much, guys, on the NASDAQ now, we're at all-time highs, right? So we're not fighting to get to that all-time high resistance. We're just continuing the uptrend pattern here, right? We're looking to maintain the previous all-time high at about 7730-ish, which was a resistance. Obviously, we broke the all-time high. Now it's a support. We're looking to maintain that level as a new support. So everything is looking pretty solid right here, right? We got the little pullback, the retest on the support on the 50 simple moving average here. We bounced on that. We pushed to a higher high. Everything in terms of an uptrend is looking juicy right now in the NASDAQ. And let me just hop here. Let me make sure we hit that all-time high today because I'm actually not too sure with you all. We actually hit it after hours here, guys. Take a look at that. 422, which is today, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard, about 30 minutes after the market. This ended up trending up. And again, this is the future. And it's at about 77.46. So yet again, guys, another all-time high was set today. 30 minutes after market hours in the NASDAQ composite. We're trending down a bit, so just keep an eye on it. Are we going to continue to push to all-time highs? That is what I'm watching in terms of the NASDAQ. So what did I end up doing today in terms of my trading, guys? Day trading, I didn't make any day trades today, to be completely honest with you guys. But I have a bunch of stocks on my watch list right now. That I'm honestly looking to swing trade and day trade depending on how the overall market ends up performing these next couple of days. But what I did do today is I actually re-entered into Apple. So for those of you all that watched my video earlier today, and if you didn't, watch that video after this one. It's extremely valuable. I talked about trading during earnings season, a warning to trading during earnings season, what you should be cautious about. That is what that video is about. But in that video, I actually mentioned how I already got back into Apple today, guys. Apple saw a pretty solid dip in its price this morning. We sold off pretty rapidly, actually, down to about 202.47. And at this point, we tested that simple moving average of uh, the 50 SMA here on the 20-day, uh, one-hour chart, right? We sold off aggressively. And I mentioned last week that if Apple were to pull back, this week, which it did, I was going to re-enter. That's exactly what ended up happening. I re-entered on the pop-up to about 203.25 or something like that. It was a very quick move here, but I did end up building a little position 
on this pump up here. So I got into Apple and I do plan on swing trading this one with the goal of selling it sometime this week to be completely honest with you guys because earnings is coming up on the 30th for Apple and like I mentioned in that video that you guys again should watch after this one, I don't really like swinging stocks through earnings so the goal here is to hop out hopefully with about a 2-3% profit this week on ticker symbol AAP. PL. And honestly, guys, that's all I'm doing right now in terms of my trading. Again, the markets are near all time highs, right? I'm being very cautious at this point um, in terms of my swing trading because the markets are at all time highs. It's earnings season. The big companies are reporting earnings. Who knows? Things can go sour very quickly, especially if some of the big names like Apple, Google, Amazon, right? If they report poor numbers, their stocks go down. They have a heavy weight on the market. They have a lot of influence on investors and traders out there in the market in general. You know, this could send down the market. Who knows, guys, right? So I'm being very, very cautious here. And I would love to know what you guys think about that, right? Are you being cautious right now since we are itching to all-time highs, inching to all-time highs in the stock market right now? Drop a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts on that are. I would love to know. So let's just talk about a couple of stocks here that I'm watching and ETFs that I'm watching here for this upcoming, really the next coming days here towards the end of April. There's a couple that come to mind, right? So Square is one that we talked about in yesterday's video. We talked about how it was trading or it is trading rather in this range, this horizontal channel from about $70 up to about $78 to $80. And what do we see today, guys? We got the perfect bounce right at that support level nice 2.6 percent a dollar and 84 cent day today in terms of square and this is what we needed to see right so this is definitely one i'm watching tomorrow for the potential continuation up to maybe the 50 simple moving average resistance that's been a resistance here over the past couple of days and the 180 estimate resistance, which again has been a resistance over the past couple of days. But what I want to warn you guys, just because we bounce on the support, you should still be approaching this one with caution because A, there's an earnings report coming up. What date is this one on? I think it's the 1st of uh, May, right? Earnings report on the 1st of May. And we're seeing overall, it's still kind of a bearish trend right now on the 184 hour, right? The 50 SMA is crossing below the 180 SMA. We're at technically right here, a lower low from the previous. So if we do end up getting rejected here at a lower high from the previous, that's just going to push us, in my opinion, below the $70 level of support. And at that point we're going to be free falling and square unless the earnings report ends up popping it back up which who knows if that's going to happen you know that's just what i'm watching and uh being cautious and mindful about in terms of square so another one uh, what's that other one, guys? Oh my God, I'm blanking out right now. JNUG. JNUG. Oh my goodness, JNUG. This one has been getting absolutely pummeled, guys, right? Absolutely pummeled. Where is it? Here it is. JNUG is a gold bull ETF, right? Whenever gold's going up, you know, JNUG is going up in price. And what do we notice here, guys? JNUG has been hitting supports and smashing through those supports day after day here over the past couple of trading weeks, right? We were holding above $9. We had some hope at this point for JNUG. It broke that level, right? We were holding $820, $830. We were talking about that one in a couple of videos. In the group chat, we broke that one very, very quickly. And now we struggled to even hold above the $8 level of support. And we had another 6% down day today, guys. Now we're just uh, hovering around the $730 level. And notice we're getting to levels that we haven't been towards in JNUG since November, the October, September days. So this price, although it's a falling knife, right? That's very obvious to see here. Although there's no confirmation that it's support, finding support and reversing to the upside, it's still one that I am heavily considering trading and one that I'm heavily watching because stocks that get battered like this or ETFs that get battered like this day in and day out, 
there's going to come a day, it's just inevitable, right, where they're going to bounce back up aggressively. And it's likely there's going to be a couple of days in a row when it bounces back up aggressively, right? Just take a look at JNUG's stock, uh, the price action over the past couple of months, right? It's not really predictable. It's not a beautiful chart by any means. But what do we notice here, guys? Take a look. This stock got battered, or ETF rather, I always mix those up, but this one got battered. $11 back in uh, August, down to $9, and then we had a couple of rebound days back up to, actually no, $7 that got battered down to, then we then we rebounded back to $9, then we got battered down again to $6.60, and we rebounded back up to $9.50, we got battered down again to $6, and then we doubled our price, or rather we rebounded back up to $10, we got battered down again re to, uh, what, what price was this, $8, then we rebounded back up to $12. So typically, guys, every single time, there hasn't been a time where it's just gone down nonstop without having a rebound. So just keep an eye on the rebound, guys, and keep an eye on gold. Once gold does show a nice, strong rebound, JNUG is going to to follow right and at this point in time uh, gold is out of support at about 1275 1276 roughly and over the past couple of trading days right it's been holding that level quite nicely so keep an eye if we do end up popping up here you know jnug is going to reverse pretty strongly and i can bet Honestly, that we're going to see at least a 10-20% move in JNUG over the span of a couple of days once gold does end up reversing because it's judging off the price action, guys. That's what historically has happened, right? So that is one, probably in terms of ETFs, the number one that I am personally watching here. Let's take a look. I thought I saw Facebook did very well today. This is what I want to talk about. We ended up bouncing on the 180 level of support. Finally, guys, we're trying trending in the middle roughly of this channel from 180 up to about 185. So tomorrow, if we get a pullback here on Facebook, this one's going to be interesting. Although we do have earnings in two days, most likely I'm going to be waiting until after earnings. And I'm, I'm a long-term investor in Facebook. So if I miss the move, you know, on a swing trade, that doesn't bother me because let's say uh, the earnings push it up 10%. That's probably not going to happen. But let's say hypothetically that does happen. I'm making money on my long-term position, right? And I wouldn't be that mad about missing out on the swing trade, right? So I'm just keeping an eye on it, right? Looking to enter on a potential pullback if the earnings, the guidance, everything's looking good, right? I'm looking to enter into Facebook stock. So Let's take a look at some other ones. Oh my God, I'm blanking out right now, guys. I had a couple um, in my head before recording this video. Let's talk about AMD very quickly. AMD has been one of those stocks that we've been talking about that's been trading in between this channel here. If we go to the 20-day, one hour, this channel between $27.15 roughly and $28.09. And we've struggled, guys over the past week and a half now to hold that $28 level and advance to the next resistance, which at this point is around $30. So until we see that slow pop up into the mid 28s, I'm staying away from AMD because I'm scared. It's just going to sell back off to $27 and just keep and, and just continue this repeating pattern of up and down, up and down. So until we pop up, you know, that is one that I am not really going to be playing here, but it has on honestly been offering some nice day trade potential. If we look on the one day, one minute, you know, this would have been an amazing day trade today. I know a lot of people um, in, in our group did end up day trading this one. So if you did, let me know down below in the comment section and congrats to you because, hey, it did very well today, right? But we are noticing a resistance again, but it is just simply maintaining that level of support, but an overall resistance around the $28 level as well. You know, this is just really maintaining uh, or really containing the price of AMD around this general area here. So guys, I'm watching AMD, Apple, Facebook. Those are probably my three main uh, stocks here. Uh, Square as well. Those are the four main ones that I'm watching here heading into tomorrow. And JNUG, 
as well as DGAS and UGAS. Those are three ETFs that I'm watching. And what's the other one off the top of my head now? I think that's all we talked about um, in today's video, guys. So keep an eye on those as well as Tesla. Might as well throw this one in because they are reporting earnings on the 24th. Tesla stock actually did very poorly today, down about 4%. It's testing the support here at around 262, 263. Can we maintain that? You know, after earnings, what's going to happen? A lot of people think Tesla stock's going to crash through the roof. Others think it might not do anything, right? But I'm waiting, of course, till after earnings to see what ends up happening. So I'm going to end off the video here today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Excuse me. Oh, my God. I'm burping on the camera. Feel free to go down below and hit that like button. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're not yet subscribed and you want to see more content, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you ended up trading today. I would love to know. And again, I uploaded a video a couple of hours ago talking about being cautious during earnings season when it comes to trading. I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in that video. So why not? It's like a seven, eight minute video. Go check out that video now. Let me know what you guys think about it. Hit a like on that one as well. Again, I truly appreciate every single one of you guys out there liking, supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. And that's all I have for you guys today. So I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video. Good luck tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your night. Peace out.